Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 305 Insights, where today we're looking at Tribe 24, the FSU recruiting class of 2024. Now, let's start off with the negative, because I always try to finish these podcasts on a positive note. The negative side for FSU recruiting now is that on National Signing Day, you have the ability to poach away their best player. A few years ago, you had Travis Hunter, the number one recruit in the nation, the one who was invested in the FSU program, recruiting for them. It was his dream school. Gets flipped by Deion Sanders. On National Signing Day, and you lose him. Last year, you lose Keldrick Falk to Auburn, your best defensive recruit. And then this year, you lose Armando Blunt, which, again, it was nice to flip him. But before signing day happened, you saw the writing on the wall. He was originally committed to UM. FSU flipped him. He reclassified to 2024. And then on the last weekend before signing day, instead of visiting FSU again, he went to visit UM. His mother clearly wanted him to play closer to home. And she went out. And there's nothing wrong with that. This was expected. He actually called the FSU coaching staff to inform them of his decision, which I commend. And then on the other hand, you have KJ Bolden, the number one safety in the country out of Bulford, Georgia. He had been committed to FSU since I believe August. Everybody thought he was going to flip to Auburn. He said he was not going to take a secret visit to Auburn, that he was committed to FSU. And then on National Signing Day, you start hearing rumblings. One of the 247 Crystal Ball folks flipped him to Georgia, and sure enough, the ceremony came about, and he flips to Georgia. So technically, even though one was expected, on paper, you did lose two five-star recruits this cycle. It's starting to become a pattern. It's starting to become a trend. And it's up to Mike Norvell to decide if he's okay with this coaching staff because you can see the results manifesting on the field. Off the field, what's going on? Do you need to get different types of voices in the room? Do you need to, unfortunately make the tough decisions on guys like Odell Hagens. I don't think that's the case, but again, we'll see how things develop with the transfer portal and how this team can continue to keep climbing and doing all this stuff that Mike Norvell likes to talk about. But nonetheless, it is something concerning. And if it weren't for the development of certain players, I believe that conversation would be necessary, but again, do you want to replace a legend like Odell Higgins? What will you bring that will match what he's done for this program? And there's other people that can have that discussion with as well, but that seems to be the loudest part of the fan base right now is with Odell and the recruiting on the defensive line. and how that can be improved because honestly we're going to touch on a few rooms the qb1 running back wide receiver and cornerback not much to touch on on the defensive side of the ball in terms of the d-line a few solid recruits that we got there but nothing that stands out like armando blunt would have stood out so that being said let's wrap up the negative stuff this is by far Coach Mike Norvell's best recruiting class since he's been here. And there's a lot of upside with this class. Obviously, we'll start off with the most important position. Luke Cromanoke, he is considered. And when I give you the rankings, I'm using on three's industrial rankings, where they take into account on three, 247 sports, rivals, and ESPN rankings. So I was going to go 247 Sports, but I don't know if they include on three. So I know for a fact that on three includes all four. 
they're weighted differently by percentages. I believe on three is thirty five percent. Rivals is twenty percent. ESPN is ten percent. So I believe two four seven is thirty five as well. However, anyways, Luke Cronoke is considered the fourth best QB and the sixth best player out of the talent rich state of Georgia. This coaching staff offered him in June of 2021 before he had any star rankings. Let me repeat that before he had any star rankings, this coaching staff loved what they saw and made him an offer. And now he's considered the fourth best QB in the country for this class. Amazing job by this coaching staff of scouting talent and watching it develop before their very eyes, before they get their hands on him. Six foot four, 205 pounds, great arm strength. And mind you, in high school, he also played safety slash cornerback and wide receiver. So that shows you the type of athleticism that he has. People rave about his ability to extend plays. And again, he's a big guy, 6'4", 205. Once he hits the weight room at FSU and they get him in the nutrition program, he should fill out that frame nicely. And he's clearly the QB of the future and it should be a star in Mike Norvell's system. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be as explosive as Jordan Travis, but if he's slightly less explosive than Jordan Travis, but has a much better arm than him in terms of the deep ball, the touch, the way he leads wide receivers. And this is all in the scouting reports from multiple sources that rave about his arm ability and also his ability to extend plays. That has shown to be very productive under Mike Norvell. So again, clearly the QB of the future. And hopefully in about two years, him and Brock Glenn will be having a battle for QB1. And by the way, all the flack that we give this coaching staff for losing out on certain recruits, it is a known fact that Georgia tried to flip him and he rejected them and stayed with FSU. He really, and he was recruiting hard for Tribe 24. He was a part of the, I believe it was the Charles Lester recruiting. Him and Cam Davis were excellent. We'll touch on Cam Davis shortly. Were excellent recruiters for this class. That being said, I'm really high on Luke. Um, Again, the arm strength, the mobility, the explosiveness. It's going to be a theme throughout this podcast of explosiveness, the speed, and the overall, how a lot of these guys are the best athletes on their team. So moving on, we're going to go to running back. Cam Davis, sixth best running back in the nation, 12th best player in Georgia. Five foot 10, 200 pounds. He's a physical, explosive running back who many believe will be a day one contributor. He's not going to run away with the starting job. He's had to play quarterback for his school for the past few years. So there's certain things that he will need to learn. He will honestly need to learn the whole package of playing running back, especially in this system where blocking is needed and different things like that. He doesn't have that experience yet, but he will. And this is a guy who's been committed to FSU when they offered him in February of 2021. This man has never wavered from his commitment. He's had other people pursue him, but he's been steadfast. I mean, if you look at the definition of loyalty, you'll see Cam Davis. This kid has been locked in for FSU for years. And it's going to be really exciting to see the caliber type of athlete that this kid is. Again, he played quarterback. He's got explosive cut abilities. He's not afraid to lower the shoulder. Again, 5'10", 200 pounds. He'll probably bulk up a little. Low center of gravity. That's really uh, an exciting player to watch under Norvell. Another, this one I think is one of the more underrated recruits of this class. He's a four-star athlete, the eighth overall athlete in the country, 25th overall player in Florida, Makai Danzi, six foot one, 175 pounds. 
he projects to be more like Lawrence Tofili. That's what a lot of people have compared him to. He'll be a running back who can also do really well on the screen passes. And this is saying something. This is probably the fastest kid on this team in terms of the Tribe 24. Gold medals in the 200 and 400 meters in the state of Florida, which tells you a lot. And again, the explosive nature, one cut, north-south, that's how they project this kid. Whether it's going to be, like you said, Lawrence Tofu with the screening as a running back, or even like a Ja'Kai Douglas where he plays a slot every once in a while and just has that explosive play every once in a while to take the top off the defense. I think he's going to be an incredible weapon for this team in the future. Moving on to the wide receiver room. We're going to start off with what I think is the one of the most underrated prospects in the country due to this run-heavy system that he played in in high school, and that's Elijah Moore. He is a four-star wide receiver, 29th overall in the country, and he's a top-five player out of the state of Maryland. Six foot four, 205 pounds. 33.75 inch arms, massive 10 and a half inch hands. He can climb the ladder and high point the ball with the best of them. It's an elite level skill that he has. He's a solid route runner that is a QB's best friend in the red zone. Because of the measurables that I gave you, his catch radius is insane. And an underrated ability that a lot of people don't speak about, but you see it on multiple scouting reports for him, is his ability to track the ball over his shoulder. And you always hear on Sundays how that's one of the toughest catches to make. And again, when I say he's going to be a QB's best friend, this is why I believe that. You can't teach those physical features for obvious reasons, but when you pair that, with great hands, with great playmaking abilities. Again, because he was in that run-heavy offense, he doesn't have those stats that really make him stand out to a lot of people. But I think Elijah Moore is going to be a special wide receiver in the years to come. And honestly, this wide receiving room class is a really good haul. You got Elijah Moore, Luane McKoy, Camden Freer, and BJ Gibson. Solid, solid haul. Would have loved Jeremiah Smith. Unfortunately, didn't get that flip. But with McCoy, another four-star athlete who could play wide receiver or defensive back. If he's a wide receiver, scouts say he's a deep threat with great speed. And on defense, there's a few outlets who believe he has the ability to shut down corner, to be a shutdown corner with his size and length. Six foot, 170 pounds. It's going to grow into that frame. Again, that explosive nature. One of his many highlights was actually playing on the defensive side. And I believe it was against IMG Academy or one of the powerhouses. In Florida, and he made some great plays, and I believe he had an interception as well. So again, these two-way players, you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot about that. Again, when I'm saying that these kids are the best athletes at their schools, this kid can be an elite deep threat, or he has a potential if he focuses on one side of the ball to be a really really high-end corner for this team. That versatility is commonplace within this recruiting class. Camden Fur is a legacy recruit. His dad played on the 93 championship team. His uncle played on the 99 championship team. So I like to think if he's recruited and he's on this squad, we've got another championship in the next four years. But he's a top-tier slot wide receiver with great hands and route running abilities. He 
He's got excellent speed. And he's going to be that safety valve for these quarterbacks in the future. Again, having him in the slot, you're going to think of all, you know, Hakeem Williams. You're going to have someone like we're going to discuss momentarily and Landon Thomas at tight end. You're going to have Elijah Moore in the future. You're going to have these running backs, you know, like Cam Davis. You're going to have Danzy. You're going to have Kazea Holmes, Sam Singleton Jr. You're going to have all these running backs. You're going to have these people at wide receiver. And he might get lost in the shuffle in the terms of the defense. And again, whether it's Chrono, Glenn, just having that surefire curl route sitting in the middle of a zone coverage with Camden, that's it's going to be something reliable. And it may not be as flashy as people like it to be, but a sure-handed wide receiver that's not afraid to go in the middle of the field is something that is very valuable in this system. And again, with that speed, and if you have a mediocre nickel cornerback or linebacker trying to peel off to cover him, there's going to be a lot of yards after catch with this kid. BJ Gibson projects to be a jack of all trades who can play wide receiver, running back, defensive back, and special teams. And it's another kid who's got yak written all over him. This is a kid who is a two way sport, baseball, and football. And again, if this is one of the lowest ceilings that you're bringing around, this just shows you how good this recruiting class is for wide receiver. Moving on, at tight end, one of the crown jewels of this offense. Landon Thomas, 6'4", 220 pounds. He's what you want in the modern-day tight end where he's too big to be covered by a cornerback and too fast to be covered by a linebacker. And in my opinion, he's going to be contributing sooner rather than later. This is a kid who we were able to flip from Georgia and hold on to him. He's a consensus four-star and a top seven tight end in the country. This is the type of, when we think of tight ends, you always have Jaheim Bell, who was able to play running back tight end and, and go out wide. You had projects like Biscuit, Marcus and Douglas, big kid, but you saw how they used him. Kyle Morlock had his moments this year as well. This system uses tight ends, not only for blocking, but to sneak out and get those big plays. And I think if Landon Thomas learns how to block properly, he's going to be an explosive playmaker in this system. Overall, with with this offensive haul, it's been a while since you've seen a lot of this upside in an FSU recruiting class. And it's good to see, again, maybe you didn't get the elite of the elite players, but you're building off the foundation of a 13-0 season. Luke Croman, in my opinion, is elite in this class. Cam Davis, top-tier running back. Landon Thomas, top-tier tight end. Elijah Moore is a great wide receiver by ranking purposes, but I think he's underrated. This has been a good haul so far on the offensive side. Now we turn over to the defensive side and focus on the defensive back room. And I think this was another great haul. Again, it could have been a lead if you kept K.J. Bolden. But nonetheless, Charles Lester III 
consensus four-star running back. This is a kid who was considered the fourth best cornerback in the country and the seventh best player in Florida. 6'2", 180 pounds, has great footwork, plus his size and reach are ones that scouts drool over at this position. He had a little fun on signing day and the day before getting people to guess if he's going to actually commit to FSU. Some people thought he was going to flip to Colorado, but this kid was always locked in for FSU. And it's going to be exciting to see him play. The potential that this kid has is especially in Adam Fuller's defense. You're going to have to give time for these kids to develop because of what's required for them and what's the system, whether it's zone sometimes, whether it's the ability to play man. There's a lot of demands that Adam Fuller expects from his defensive backs. And Charles Lester will exceed those expectations. Kai Bates, another consensus four-star, 6'2", 180 pounds, was a commit to LSU before he backed out, started visiting Florida State, and then committed to Florida State. This is someone who I think has high upside because he's only played DB for about two years. He was originally a wide receiver and then flipped to the other side. He's got long arms, great size, and the athletic ability. Again, this is someone who played basketball and ran track. He plays faster than his speed shows on the field, and he uses that speed to close in if he's in a zone coverage or if he's trailing the wide receiver to kind of bait the quarterback. Now, we'll see if that works on the next level in terms of trailing the wide receivers, but again, that closing speed and the technique that this staff will teach him with Fuller and Patrick Sertan, again, he's only played cornerback for two years. And he's shown a lot by all scouting metrics on all these websites. They're really high on his abilities, on his techniques, his ability to move, to read the hips of wide receivers and which way they're going to go, to use his hips, his leverage, to play on the ball. They're really high on him. And so am I. Another great recruit that they got was Jamari Howard, who was a longtime commit to Michigan State, but backed out for obvious reasons, with the turmoil that's going on with that school. And this is one of the quarterbacks that will have that versatility to play multiple positions, it seems. Six foot two, 175 pounds. And again, consensus four star. He's got a six foot eight wingspan with 80 inch. Well, that's what that translates to. Six foot eight, 80 inch windspan. That's what he plays at. That's a lot of length to go up against. And the great part is, is this kid has top end speed. He ran track as well. A common theme that we've gone over with these kids. But he can play press at an elite level due to his physicality. And if he adds more size and weight, specifically weight, because I don't know how much more he's going to grow. Scouts believe his skills will easily translate to safety. He could be a physical ball hawking safety, or he's going to be a shutdown corner. It's a lot of upside with Howard. And again, these kids from Florida are on another level. I've always said that I'll take a three-star kid from Florida over a four-star kid five-star kid from New York or, you know, one of these places that don't really produce a lot of talents because the amount of competition in Florida is unmatched. Florida is the number one state for me for recruiting. And then after that, you can do your Texas, California, Georgia. You can do whatever you want with the rankings. But for me, without a doubt, Florida is number one. And these kids week in and week out are playing the best. The final one we have is rookie Knight, the third, a three-star cornerback 
44th ranked in the country, 58th in Florida, six foot one, 170 pounds. To me, he's also another very underrated prospect in the scouts agree. He's got excellent speed. He ran track as well, which allows him to be versatile and excel in man or press or off coverage, like in the zones, which again, Adam Fuller is going to use greatly. Due to his ability to play wide receiver as well in high school, scouts believe his ball hawking ability will be high as well. And again, this is a consensus three star, but if you see the stats in his kid, I mean, the, his shutdown ability at his school, they had the QBR or one of those statistics of people throwing at him, where basically if you just threw the ball on the ground, you get like a 38.3. And it was more efficient to throw the ball into the ground than throwing it at him. And that's how good a, of coverage that he offers. So again, there's a lot of, to me, there's a lot of high-end talent when it comes to the defensive backs and the wide receivers. You've got an elite level quarterback coming in and you've got two explosive athletes at wire at running back. Again, the dominant conversation among FSU fans and the narrative around the country is this was a very good class, a top 10 class. But again, they were sitting at number three going into signing day. You could have had an elite class. And a lot of the fan base is disappointed that off a 13-0 and season, you weren't able to secure an elite class. But ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it. This is a really good class. And we'll see it in a few years. That this is going to be one of those classes that this fan base looks back on and sees the difference makers that were a part of tribe 24. And you see the relationships that the coaching staffs have built again with Davis and Chrome Oak, both players were offered in 2021 and they've been long time commits and great recruiters for this class. You saw how they kept Luke, how they kept Landon Thomas, how they were able to take Kai Bates away from LSU in the sense of FSU was really not on his radar. But once he decommitted, he started attending the games, taking official visits, he was in. Jamari Howard had plenty of people pursuing him after his decommit from Michigan State, but everybody had that crystal ball in FSU because of the relationships that they built. Patrick Sertan, in the past, well, ever since he's been hired, has made an incredible difference in this program with their recruiting prowess on that athletic side. In terms of, again, when I say athletic, I'm thinking of athletes, how they're not necessarily ranked as DBs or anything like that. He has made a significant upgrade to this recruiting cycle. So again, I'm high on a lot of kids on this class. We'll see how it breaks down in the future. But coming up shortly, we're going to be doing a review of UM's 2024 recruiting class. We'll see how it stacks up, not only to FSU's, but in general to the nation and seeing how they've improved things. But with that being said, FSU... This was a great, great haul by this coaching staff on the wide receiver side, on the skill positions overall. So that being said, go Knowles, Tribe 24, Unconquered. Have a good one, folks. Thanks for listening.